What? No fee music, no? Glasstone, now Chris the host Man, I make a little dinner while I'm fasting joke uh, Come to the yard, get it off your chest There's no hard feelings when you're rocking with the best Everything's Chris, everything's nice Throw a little sugar, add a little spice Ask school questions, cook a little rice Gamble like Vegas and throw a little dice Raise your glasses, make a toast Drop by Chris for a Sunday roast Or a taste of his mixology Get twisted and not off the Hennessy Now your belly's full, play a game of ball Gusto, he's coming from the old school No if Fox made these wise No city questions I tell no lies Everything Chris Everything Chris Everything Chris Everything, everything Everything Chris Everything Chris Everything Chris Everything, everything Chris With Daniel Idozi, the captain. Goodness gracious, no. You got there, man. Yeah, it's sticking out all the way to the end, man. How you doing? You good? I'm good, man. I'm good. How you doing, man? Yeah, not too bad, man. These technical difficulties can really crazy. All that. Yeah. Getting through that, man. Brixton's getting me through. Brixton's getting me through. Brixton's getting you through, huh? South London. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. I actually didn't grow up too far away from Brixton, you know. I used to live in Listen, Norbury. Norbury? Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Damn, no, 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 not too far, man. No, it's not. Literally, you're out the street. Was it Streatham? Was it Thorneath? Then Streatham or Streatham and Thorneath? And then Norbury. Thorneath, yeah, I know Thorneath as well. Yeah, South, that's South London, Quaidon side. Oh, damn, you so you say so so it's got some common ground there as well. Yeah, man, come on, bro. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> nice, man. Shit, sure, man. How you been anyway, man? Yeah, I've been good, man. I've been good. Just uh, enjoying myself, you know, staying busy. Like I, I was trying to tell you on uh, fr- on Saturday, um, staying busy and just trying to keep myself occupied during these times. What about yourself? Yeah, yeah, same here, man. I'm di- just keeping myself um, occupied and uh, doing these live talks. It's a bit like therapy at the same time and also something I enjoy and something of it's a passion of mine. So, yeah, yeah, this is something that's been keeping me really grounded now, man. So I'm kind of 100% going on this. No, I hear that. I can see you being like a like a radio broadcaster, like a holding holding a like host, a hosting hosting show or whatever. So, you know, that's that's the aim, man. I want to do it. That's the aim. I've got the show. I've done. I've recorded one episode. So when I put it out, everyone will see what I'm trying to do. So it's a platform for the ballers in UK, man. So okay, nice. I want to see you guys get some more exposure. Like that's that's what it is. No, hundred percent. You're doing way more work than Sky News or you know like BT Sports. Oh, so, that, that's a compliment, man. I take that, man. <laughs> Try my best, man. Yeah. Yeah, no, of course, of course. Now you had a good weekend. Good weekend. It was alright. Um, I've been doing this this weekend, you know. So a lot of this and chasing people. So not chasing people, but you know, messaging people and trying to get some more of these talks out. So. Yeah, that's my weekend, man. How many did you do after the the whole trip? That was the atrocity of the last one that we had. <laughs> no, no, no. I've been talking to people though. I've got some lined up, so you'll see some oh. more of my posts. I've got some more lined up. So. Yeah. Okay, that's cool, man. That's okay. cool. So talking to some right. people. That. <laughs> Graduate. Uh, yeah. So before we got cut off last time, man. Um. Yeah, the early years, man. Like the humble beginnings, man. Yeah, give us a short version, <laughs> uh, man. Do they have to start all the way from the beginning, all the way from scratch again? Not all the way from scratch, but uh, yeah, see, I think we can, we can, yeah, yeah, yeah. We can, we can skip bits of that. You know what I mean? Okay, okay. So um, I'm just gonna start from the beginning. So I was born here in London and whatnot. Uh, grew up, moved a lot, moved in plenty of different places and whatnot. Yeah. That's across Norbury because I, I end up living in one of those places, and then. Yeah. Uh, Went back and forth between America and England quite a few times. Yeah. So, uh, it was just us two. And we ended up moving to New York, because I went New York, Boston in 2004. And yeah. we went, like, I, I personally thought we was going to be going to uh, where, we had one, where we had family members in one of the three places in Texas, Florida, and New York. But unfortunately, we didn't, we didn't go to any of those places. So it was a bit... It was a bit of like a confusing decision as to why we're truly over here. And I didn't, I didn't really know why I was over there. Yeah. I was just going along with the flow. Sometimes when you're kids, you don't really, 
Yeah, yeah, exactly. You just you do what mom says. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so then, um, so then we we end up taking this random three day bus trip to Las Vegas, and what was it? Yeah, we got we got to Las Vegas, and like literally after a week, after a week after arriving in Las Vegas, because we stay we stay in the flat for a week, um, we end up going instantly south, which means we end up heading straight into. What is called, you know, the struggle, or the poverty, or the, the those sort of like social, yeah. those ingrained social issues. So, um, I always tell people this, but from 2004 to 2005, like it was, it was a boxing match. It was, you know, it was one thing after another, after another, after another. Yeah, I know that feeling, man. You just you feel like you can't get out. You just keep fighting. You keep fighting, man. Trying to keep positive and whatnot. And what happened was, um, we went from a flat and straight away, like went became homeless like in a heartbeat in, in a second and so we went from a flat to a shelter and then we ended up like traveling around um and we traveled between two different places and we went from we went from las vegas to los angeles back to yeah. los angeles and within those places we was we was we were staying in and out of shelters uh or we we're staying in in and out of in and out of shelters um, we're staying on the streets, staying in random places, sleeping in parks, sleeping on buses. Yeah. And, you know, I was only, I was only 12 years old, uh, 11 going on 12 years old. Right. And so, um, you know, a lot of times, like a lot of times it's like trying to figure out, like, how do you really make sense of these days and whatever's going on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oftentimes it, it's almost like there's that challenge to find a little bit of hope somewhere. And that was like the daily battle, the daily yeah. battle daily struggle you know so um so yeah going back and forth between those places and it didn't get any better as time went along in fact we came across this place in los angeles california and it's called um skid row and skid if, row, yeah have you, have you ever heard of it or have you heard of that no it's the first i've heard of this you know it's the first you ever heard of it okay so yeah, yeah. skid row uh, uh skid row is basically a two mile radius um in los angeles california like, yeah yeah in the heart of it and basically uh it's it's a place surrounded and filled with like poverty people who have given up on themselves people who are sleeping Damn, so so okay. your surroundings was kind of like you just oh, felt like you could yeah yeah so it's nah. like that you can't make it mentality yeah no nah, for, for real like literally like if you used to if you even if you used to google it now man and you used to look up some videos about it you would think like you know the videos only speak for themselves but being yeah environment is 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 another it's, it's an eye opener it's a different world you know so um not only that but also like seeing people like shoot substances in broad daylight or you know you're constantly walking around um looking no, at over your shoulder making sure that nobody's gonna do anything because you never knew so, you never so you're walking around like this like, oh, damn. I still the swivel, man. like just and, the, and, and the funny thing is i'm there thinking i've grown up in the hood where i'm looking over my shoulder but the way you're that from what you're telling me down that's a yeah man but it, but even then yeah. like it's something similar it's a similar experience simply because you know you just never know who's up to what um yeah, so, yeah and it's, it's like a place where it's just like no hope like there's no it's almost like there's no there's no inspiration there's nothing to look forward nothing to. Other, nothing other than to survive yeah that's it man you're just trying to find where your next place is to yeah. see where is the next place that's serving food that's it like, yeah 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 i get that man so so, so during those times then of all that how did you like what what kept you going like during those times man <sighs> You know, I, I'm just, I'm, st I'm slowly starting to tune into it now, but there was like this voice, you know, there's this voice of, yeah. voice of like instinctive um, signaling, like this things that you just kind of, you kind of like, when, when you're going through moments like these, there's something yeah. that's, like just trust. Keep it. going. Yeah, you know, just keep going regardless, that's it. Like that voice, man, that, um, that I, I, like, I, I definitely becoming more aware of it now is just like that keep going voice has always just been there like even I've, yeah I've, I've been in that pure adversity so yeah I've... and it doesn't get any better from here man so um so we ended up going through uh we ended up leaving from los angeles california in hopes of getting to florida and in in terms of in terms of like getting to family members and whatnot and yeah. uh, unfortunately 
throughout this three-day bus ride, I didn't even mention this, but we came in to, into America on a 30-day uh, day or three-month visa. And so by this point in time, Ooh, damn. We've, overstayed, we've, overstayed in, we've overstayed our stay in America by over, like, going on nine months or so. So, you know, it's one of them ones. So it's kind of like, you know, if you get caught, you get caught up in the wrong end, you know, it's, it's, it's yeah. you know, bound to be served. And so, um, and so, um, we ended up, so we ended up going across the, you know, we're on the bus or whatever, but then we come up, come across a, a state, Texas, yeah. and leaving, leaving, uh, El Paso, which is all the way on the west side of Texas, uh, we come across this, um, we come across immigration and, you know, yeah. it's kind of very short, but the officers, they got on the bus, checked everybody and then, and then got to my mom and they said, you guys need to leave. Oh, you guys need to get off the bus because um, you know we don't have our papers right and stuff like that. So yeah, we end up getting 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 off the bus. So um, and then get get back sent to El Paso, and then unfortunately our, our hopes of getting to Florida and seeing our aunt and maybe that would be the perfect solution for what we're going through. Yeah, yeah, it didn't happen. You know what I mean? Even yeah, even yeah. Hope that you do have, you know, sometimes it can get shot out that window. You know, just like. It's hey, mad, I, like, just that little, like, let me have this, please, and it's like, ah, uh, damn. That, oh, man, trust, man. And it's like, and it's like, once it was stripped away, it was like, cheese, like, man. So it was, it, was, it was like a realization. But then again, it was a humbling moment, too. And how is it? It's just because, like, it was kind of like um, when we got back to Texas. So when we, got, when we got back to El Paso and to realize that we had just been taken away or we've been taken off our journey. It was like, dang, it was kind of like bound to happen. You know, we had been yeah, yeah. before we left um, while we was in Los Angeles. And so then, um, and so anyway, it was just like, okay, you know, just kind of see where we go from here. But then what ended up happening next is we stayed in El Paso for four weeks, saw an immigration officer, and then an immigration officer told us that we are no longer allowed to be in the country, so you guys are going to have to leave. But they don't send us right back, right then and there. So, and it's just like, Damn, like, I didn't ask for any, like, did not ask for any of this. <laughs> <laughs> you're just like, you're just there because you've been, you're obviously you've been with moms and that. So, yeah. Yeah. And it's, and it's just kind of like, cheese, like, you know, you just got to keep going, man. You know, whatever, whatever this, whatever this journey, um, whatever this journey has in store for you, you just got to keep going. Yeah, go keep you fine. Well, so, um, uh, after four weeks of staying in El Paso, we ended up moving to Los Angeles, California. And then uh, when we moved to Los Angeles, California, we had went to, um, uh, well, we went back and, of course, like, went through everything all over again. And plus two, and plus two is one of those ones where um, being back at square one and now going back to the drawing board and figuring out how to, <laughs> how do you find yeah. it? Hey, you know what I mean? Like, damn, damn. It's, it's like when you're looking for a job and you apply and you go for the interview and everything and then you don't get it and you're like, damn, now I'm going to go look again. Like, it's, yeah, that's it, man. That's the perfect that, way to put it there. And it's kind of like, in that time, you got a little bit of pressure, you know, where it's kind of like the pressure was either between life or despair, you know, that, that will to give, that will, that, that, that bit about you to quit now or... Yeah. Uh, or, or that that bit about you to keep on going. So it was that was the constant like, pressure moment, you know. And so anyway, um, and so then this one day, this is well, this, I'm going to jump to like how all this like changed or whatever. Yeah, so, yeah, so uh, don't move, man. Yeah, so so my mom and I, we was walking from, we was walking in Skid Row and was, was leaving the shelter. And during this time, was using a shelter service in San Fernando Valley, which is in North Hollywood somewhere. Yeah, and. So, of bypassing North Hollywood somewhere. And so uh, we was walking and I asked my mom, Mom, can we go ahead and get some food to eat? Because there was a shelter that was selling food at the time. Yeah. And, um, my mom said no, and she kept on walking. So then I, I, I came, I come to this stop. I come to this, like, hope. And I asked myself, you know, it's one of those ones where do I keep going down the same path or do I go about searching, using what I have and kind of, you know, explore it for myself and just find my own options sort of thing. Yeah. And and I came, I, I made that later decision. I ended up just going into, 
guns to shelter. You know, my mom didn't come back. And by the way, before I keep on going, I'm not mad at my mom. I'm not upset. I'm not angry. Yeah. I just want to clarify that. Yeah, you're, you're in a better place. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. you hold on to that anger. You're only going to eat your life. It's not going to eat anyone else, man. Oh, that's exactly. And it's not going to help at all, you know? So, yeah. um, and so, so anyway, I went in the shelter, went in there, got some food, came out. And now picture this. All I had coming out of the shelter was a 200, 150 to 200 gallon trash bag just filled with straight clothes. No money, no phone, mm -hmm. no no resource, no nothing. You know, 12, Damn. 12, 12 years old, being at, the, being at the face of rock bottom, it's, it's like it's up to you as to how you're, how you're going to decide to respond. You know what, though? Rock bottom gives you that motivation to think what, like, you know, it's has your choice now. You're at the bottom now, whatever. You're going to step up or you're just going to just let it defeat you, man. So. That's it, man. It's just, and again, like, it's, it's motivation, isn't it? It's like, yeah, yeah. you know, if you're driven by a by hunger in a positive way, then it's like, geez, all right, I'm, I'm hungry. I'm, where's this next opportunity? You're going to do whatever yeah, yeah. you get there. So, um, which is, which I'll explain a little bit later on. But, so, uh, leaving the shelter, I made a right, and I made a, I made a left down the main street. And uh, what I come to realize, man, what happens next is, is completely unbelievable. So I get, to the, I get to the corner of the street, and I see that my mom, I realize that my mom is on the bus heading to where she wanted to go to, right? So I'm standing here. I know this sounds crazy. I know, but it's, it's, it's crazy. It's, it's, it's like, you know, I'm going to get to a point at some point. But I see my mom is on the bus heading to where she wanted to go to. And so I'm standing here on this corner trying to process this whole thing that's going on, right? And so um, I, I look to the left of me, and there's a there's a bus up down the street in which the bus was heading towards. And I'm thinking, like, okay, you know, do I run after the bus? Do I, you know, does mom, do I wait? Yeah. Here? Mom gets off the bus sort of thing. But instead, here's what happens. So the bus gets to the bus stop. I see absolutely no sign of my mom, right? And then the bus keeps on going. <laughs> I'm I'm dead serious, man. So now I just get, now I just sitting here, no, standing here and and seeing that basically, and I look back now like I was abandoned in you know in one of the toughest places in the United States of America. It's just like there was only it was either one or two options that I could that I could take. It was either yeah. you know like look at become a part of product of the environment, give in, become a part of the surroundings, look at yeah. yeah. Say, you know, maybe this is where I belong. Or I either trust what's within my heart, trust my voice, you know, trust my sense of direction, trust my instincts, trust what yeah, yeah. either is going to find what, what it is that I'm looking for. And so, um, and so I decided to just look for somewhere to sleep. And so uh, I come across two, um, I come across three shelters, but the first two I'm going to talk about. Yeah. And so the first... The first uh, two shelters I come across, I went in there and I asked them, excuse me, wholeheartedly, I'm looking for somewhere to sleep. Do, do you think you'd be able to help me? They asked me how old I was because they sensed I was young. And I said, I'm only 12 years old. And they <clears> said, sorry, kid, we're not going to be able to help you. And so not once, uh -huh. twice, you know. And again, like just like going into a job interview, you're going to get rejected after time after time. Yeah. It's like, what do you do? Do you, do you do you stop? Do you say, forget it? You know what? Maybe I just quit. Or do you go you again? Go. go again. Find somewhere else. That's it, man. So, and um, and so I come, I come to uh, the another shelter, last one, and ask them. Excuse me, I'm looking for somewhere to sleep. Do you think you'd be able to help? And they said, uh, they well, they asked me how old I was. I told them I was twelve, but they said they wouldn't be able to tell me because I'm under the age of eighteen as well. However, what? though to ask other questions there was like well where's your mom what are you doing here and uh, where are you staying and i was telling telling them a little bit of information about what's going on and what's happening like with my mom and whatnot and they said you shouldn't be here so they basically went into problem solving mode and just trying to find whatever it is that i could have needed or that i needed in that moment which was yeah, just yeah. someone that would take me right and so um make a long story short caught up caught up a couple places didn't answer but then uh they called the police police came and picked me up and um you know i was a bit paranoid because you know all they had to do was to type my name in and, that, and given the fact that i've been deported who, who, yeah 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 how this would have turned out you know so um but luckily they didn't we went on the search for my mom 
couldn't find her. Uh, drove around a little bit, drove around Skid Row, bus bus stops, a couple train stations, couldn't find her. And then we ended up uh, at the police station. Now, sat at the police station five hours, right? Sat at the police station for five hours, just there by myself. You know, all, mom don't know where I'm at. You know, structures in, in place, you no know, support. I mean, it's, yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a complete broken sort of like thing to be in. But however, what happened is by the end of the night, uh, a guy came in. And a uh, guy came in and he was talking to police officers, then came over to me. And he was asking me a little bit about what's going on and stuff. And um, he ends up telling me that he's a social worker. So I'm like, okay. And I ended up jumping in the car with him by the end of the night. And through through that ride, he basically said, we're going to put you in the foster care system tonight. After I asked him, am I in the foster care system now? So, um, yeah, and after that, life just took a complete 180, man. It went from that to then going Yeah, to all of a sudden. And, and just going and then basically overcoming the deportation case and playing sport and going to school and like it was a bit more structured in life now you know? so and then um and then yeah keep on going further and went to university and playing professionally a little bit yeah. so when did you get into basketball then i didn't get into basketball well i got into basketball when i was well to be fair i, I was playing basketball a little bit while I was going through um a little bit of those experiences but then to actually seriously play it, I didn't even start playing until like 13, 14 when I was finally in the foster care system. So, yeah, yeah, yeah man. So, yeah, and it's just more like, it's not about, I'm not saying it from an ego point, but it's, it's, it's not about like what I've been through. It's just the, just the stories I just want to share with a purpose that would help inspire and like help move the up. The next person. Oh, it is, you know, so. Definitely, man. It's like, it's like a lot of people are more prone to quitting and giving up on small things you know like and they don't even know that those small things are only just small stepping stones small st yeah yeah to to grow and stuff like that and it's like we when we when you fall short of well not even fall short but when you quit up on the small things like you're 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 basically buying into quitting you know what i mean like oh this is too hard well it's not really hard it's just you not really hard just you put your mind to it yeah that's it man so yeah, I learned, learned several lessons, man. Several several lessons during those experiences and definitely more than willing to share. So uh, no. no man, that's dope, man. Like that's that that surprised me, man. Just watching out on the BBC, so you know, I just wanted to ask myself as well how it was. So mad, mad props to you for that one, man. You know what I mean? So, so you know, um so you so you got into basketball at fourteen, so was you in so you played in high school and then you said you went to college afterwards? Yeah, I was in high school, so... Um, Talk through that journey, yeah, man. So, I didn't start playing... Like I said, I didn't start playing basketball until 14. Um, so, I was playing for this club uh, called LA City Wildcats. In fact, I started playing in middle school um, at Willowbrook, what's that? Willowbrook Middle School. And then, yeah. during that time, there was this guy, coach, and he asked if I was interested in playing for an AU club. And so... Uh, the AU club was called LA City Wildcats. And I said, yeah, sure, I'm, I'm more than interested. I just have to speak to my foster parent and see what she says. And, um, yeah, she was happy to support it. And so then I started playing there a little bit. And then um, as time grew, I was slowly getting better a little bit. And then into my yeah. head, uh, I ended up getting injured. And I got injured and broke my tibia bone. And I, I just... Yeah, it broke my tibia bone just basically from like growing and impact and running and stuff like that, and um and so so I had to sit out. I was sit. I sat out for a whole year, you know. Given the fact I held back, I held it okay. like months, but you know, of course, like coming off of something like that, it was best to take it easy. And so I sat out my freshman year or my ninth grade year, and I didn't start getting back into playing sports or playing basketball. So my 10th grade year, so I, by this time I'm like 15, growing on 15, 16, or oh, 15 or so. Yeah. And so, um, and so started playing then, and then uh, went to Reverend Day, uh, which is an all-boys school, and then I was playing for an, uh, a club called ICANN, ICANN All-Stars, and I played with them throughout my whole high school. And, okay. Yeah, and so every, junior and senior year, and so uh, traveled around, went, went from I started playing in like big tournaments, never heard of any of these. You know, it's just like going playing AU was a complete eye opener. It was like, 
Yeah, he was playing against like some of the best teams and some of the best players who all play basketball throughout the country. So it was all it was all good. It was good to it's good to embrace that experience, you know. And it was um, something that kind of put me on edge a little bit. Like, yeah, I, you know, it's a sport that I definitely can see myself playing. So and plus too, like having dreams. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it got you far though look where it got you man you know what I mean yeah. got you some got you some places bro basketball was a blessing then yeah of course man Tra- traveled around enough, around enough in America and um well it's uh, my favorite place we traveled to uh, when I was playing AU was probably Milwaukee actually and that was where like some of the best like East Coast players were and stuff like that yeah it was good and then um and then oh man the story doesn't stop, man. It keeps going. So, I finished high school. Okay, I fin- ended up finishing high school. Uh, I went to three different high schools, by the way. I went to Centennial, King Drew, and Bourbon... Uh, sorry, Bourbon Day, King Drew, and Centennial. That's I mean, three different high schools. Yeah, three different high schools. And so then, um, after finishing high school, this time I'm 18 now, and I, I end up going to Texas to play at a junior college. Yeah. Um, and so, played at a junior college for two years called... Tyler Junior College, and uh, it was a, it was actually it's actually one of the top junior colleges in America, probably like top five, top ten, or something something like that for like right. student population, but also two sports and and it's big for football as well. And so um and so yeah, we did well there. I was uh at this point I'm like playing well enough, playing good enough, um getting enough college collegiate attention from like other schools and universities. Okay. Yeah, so someone like you went D one, right? Yeah, yeah, I went D one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I ended up signing to um, Iowa State University. And yeah, yeah. Cleveland. I, huh? Cleveland. No, Iowa. Iowa. No, Iowa. That's, oh, Iowa. Iowa. Sorry, Iowa. Yeah. yeah I said, yeah. I said Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> I get confused though, Iowa and Ohio. Cause, I mean, yeah. same, but. Yeah, no, Iowa State. I went there, and I went there for two years. Cyclone Nation. Once a cyclone, always a cyclone. <laughs> okay. That's <laughs> how it goes. But yeah, no, it's, it was cool. Um, enjoyed the the. It was it was, a, it was that was adverse adverse as well, but also it was it was also growing. It was also a growing experience and a learning experience. So, so what did what's some what's one of the best things you learned through that college period, junior college to Division One, man? What's the best things you you say you've taken from that experience. Uh, Best thing I've taken from the experience, man, just always definitely say humble yourself, you know, keep yourself humble and be grateful because there's guys that try and, that play the sport that are dying to just for a piece of the opportunity that you have. So, you know what I mean? Like, everybody wants to play basketball and stuff like that. I don't, I don't blame them, but, you know, that's one thing. Um, and then just networking, you know, net, network, build relationships. Definitely, man. You know what I mean? Like, after, yeah. cause, you know, Effort. It's not like it's not like something that you can do for forty, fifty years. I mean, if you're if you're born and gifted for that, then great. But if you're not, then you know, kind of like you mm. relationships that can help you to find opportunities or help move opportunities about to come your way. You know what I mean? So, um, I, I believe in that, man. You will help each other. If you help one person, you know, what I mean, another person can help you. And I'm a good believer in that. So, exactly, man. Exactly. And that's and that's a that's a great way of looking at it. Yeah, always, man. This everyone helps everyone, man. Definitely, man. Oh, so, yeah. like, um, fast forward a bit now. You've done D one and that the Bristol. So your Bristol, um, the gig, man. How did that all start out? Like, talk us through how that all started out up until now. Okay, so I was in. Um, I was I was playing in a tournament after I finished university, and uh, I. And in Las Vegas and I met a couple of players that I actually have played for Bristol over the well, over the years since I've been here. Um oh, in Las Vegas. Yeah. And so, No, it was um Lavelle Cook and Brandon Brooks. Okay. Yeah, those two guys. It was there a couple of seasons ago a couple of seasons ago. Okay. Now, I remember Bristol before I went BBR. I do remember that team. Oh did you? Yeah, and then you lot went BBR afterwards. Okay, yeah. so that was back in two thousand and four. Four, five? Oh, sorry, 2014, 15? Yeah, around that time, yeah. Because yeah. I was, I thought, yeah, I saw them in Division One. They played um Lee's Met when I was at Lee's Met. So, oh, and, Lee's they, Met. and they had Rob Lofman there and some other guys. Then, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Doug McLaughlin, um, yeah, Greg Street, Roy Owen. Yeah, yeah, Tyron Treasure and that. Yeah, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Jeez, yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. How, when you think about it like that, that wasn't actually too long ago. <laughs> no, 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 no. And then you know who came afterwards, so. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Look at where the club is at now, huh? <laughs> it's amazing, it's amazing. But yeah, um, but yeah, so how did, how did it work? So yeah, I was playing in Las Vegas, and, um, and I was playing like in a showcase, and the coach that I was playing for, or the team that I was playing for with the coach, he knew Andreas. And so he put, okay. he put in touch with Andreas, or so the head coach for the Bristol Flyers. And um, we just started talking from there a little bit, you know, just talking a little bit. But this is one thing. There's a couple more. Well, there's a couple motivations, um, motivating factors that actually drove to coming here to Bristol. And one of them was my sister, who is in Bath, and then my brother, okay. also in London. So I actually see in the comment section. <laughs> okay, okay. Shout out to bro. Shout out to brother. <laughs> My oh. brother just joined in as well. My brother's in there. Shout out my brother. He just joined in the conversation too, so. Oh, man. Hopefully your brother's doing well, man. Hopefully he's doing yeah. well. But, yeah, yeah, man, definitely. And then plus two, um, didn't see my... I, so when my mom, she left from America in 2006, 2007 or something like that. So she came back to England. And um, I hadn't seen my mom since that time. So that was another motivating factor to come to, to, come to England as well. Okay. So, so you had a lot of family there. Yeah, I have a yeah, I want to have a couple of family members to connect with, and you know, just kind of like spend some time with and stuff like that. So, and then plus too, like Bristol, when I was looking at it on um on 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 the internet and stuff like that, it looks good. So yeah, um, well, let me give it a try, see what it's saying, and then come to Bristol. <laughs> you know, it's just like Bristol's Bristol's like a beautiful place to be. You know, if you're a Bristolian and you're here, like it's it's a, it's it's chill, like. It's vibes, you know, it's not like everybody's not on the edge over, over here. I'm, yeah, I've only been, do you know, I've not been out in Bristol, I've only been in Bristol to see the games twice, your games twice. So I saw um, London Lions, you play London Lions and then London Royals at the time. So I've been, I've been to still, I've been, been to your arena anyway. Okay, okay, well yeah man, well you, well, you got a feel for like what the vibe is like and what the well, vibe is. They love you over there, man. Damn, man. You, you, like, you like the fan favorite, man. They, they will love you over there, man. They got they got good, great fans. You lot have got some great fans there, man. Like, Oh, yeah, man. They're passionate. They care. Like, it's, it's just all, yeah. all family structure, man. It's like, it's, it's like yeah. uh, when you think about flyers and whatnot, like, and when, you, when you're, like, in the dynamics of the actual, like, culture of the, or the club culture, and from the fans all the way up to, like, you know, through business and stuff like that. Everybody's cool. Like everybody, yeah, yeah. everybody's vibing. You know, like everybody's like, yes, and everybody wants to grow and get better and, and you know help improve the club and improve the nature of everything that's going on. I, I definitely want to see that improve. I think I read somewhere as well. Is it you guys are supposed to be in the talks of getting a new arena as well? Yeah, that's not to well. I don't even know. <laughs> I mean, oh, never, no. but now I wouldn't be. I wouldn't be surprised if they postponed the construction of it. So yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll see. It might, it might be, it might be a little while. Mm -hmm. It might be a little while until, um, till they get, till they get it up. But yeah, this, yeah, it's probably in like four, three, four years, maybe. Definitely, man. Definitely, man. So, so yeah, that journey again. So you moved out to Bristol. Obviously, the family members and that, and you said the atmosphere. What else was it that made you choose Bristol? Um. What else? What just just to come to Bristol, or like be in Bristol and just stay in Bristol. Like yeah, staying in Bristol and playing in Bristol, and what 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 were the main things that just made you just say, you know what, like I'm gonna come and sign with Bristol. You've been there for four years now, haven't it? Well, well, that's actually my fifth season. Well, fifth? Oh shit, miscounted that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Feel, to be fair, it doesn't feel like it, but um, some of the factors that helped me to oh, that's that's like basically inspired me to stay here in Bristol was just like I said, like I have a I have a sister in Bath. And so yeah. I wanna continuously continue to like try and connect with her and like never grow up yeah. It's good to like be with her and spend some time with her and then family not too close. Um Bristol isn't too far to be fair, Bristol is not far from everything. It's not far from London. If you want to go up north, you know, you could fly up north or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Places. Um and then, you know, I just met, a, I met my, well, I started my university stuff here like a few years ago. And so, oh, okay. yeah, my studies and whatnot. And so, um, what else? And then I also, also like met my girlfriend here. Uh, so yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> so I'm living with and whatnot. Um, what else, man? And yeah, just the life, just the vibes, man. I enjoy. It. I love Bristol. Like my heart's, my heart's here for Bristol for sure. And Definitely, man. I can tell, man. I can tell. And they got, you got, they're supporting you. And also, what is it like with um? So also with Bristol, you also um, with your coach, you um played in the Commonwealth Games. Yeah. How was that, man? Yeah, that was what two years ago, twenty eighteen. Uh, it was good though. It was good. It was it was a it was a it was an it was an experience that if it was to happen again, I would do whatever I can to make it happen. So, so um, first time, first time flying or playing for represent represent England and then flying to Australia. You know, I think that was that was almost like a like a blessing in itself. You know, just to kind yeah. of think about where it is that you know I'm not saying it's the bad way, but coming coming from you know like where. All the struggles and all the battles and all the, all the experiences that I've had over these last 20, 20 years, twenty years, yeah, 20 yeah, yeah. whatever. It's like it's prepared me perfectly for this moment. So that's um, dope. Yeah, you know, it's, it's it's so that that was that was like a part of like something uh, something to be grateful for, and then and then uh, moving to. Moving to the experience, so there'll be competition to like see other countries, to be a part of something like that big. Um, that's right underneath the Olympics was again another blessing in itself. Yeah, uh, a chance to like, you know, meet different, see different teams, like see other sports being played. Um, being basically like up there with like the best in your sport for your country. Like it's that's it's, it's mad, isn't it? You have some guys there as well on your team that I I, I know of, like I know all and and. Yeah. Kofi Joseph, I've been speaking to him a lot recently as well, and, and some other guy like Joey Quinn as well. You had, you had like a, a solid team there with you as well, man. Yeah, we had yeah we had a solid team. Yeah, we definitely had a solid team. Um, I think the thing is, it's just our it was our first time. I think everybody on the team playing together on that level and in that experience. So it's like, it's kind of like you know we need many more experiences like that in order to continue to. Get used to the pressure. Get used to the atmosphere. Get used to the competition. Because you know, I think the more the more often that we have, like we have those experiences as a team, or if any country who has enough in that competition, like the better they'll get. So, you know, I think mm-hmm. uh, reflecting back at it now, it's like we we had we had guys that were competitive, were competitive, and you know, all wanted uh, a medal or want to walk away from the experience with a medal, yeah. but we didn't. So. You, know, no, you, did, you did good though, man. You yeah. did good though, man. Yeah, no. It, did, it was, did that, so, you know, no, that um, Commonwealth experience, did that help your relationship with um, your coach a bit more? Like, did that kind of like bring your coach a bit more closer, you two to each other? Like, you know, you got to um, spend a bit more time off the court, away from with each other, and then going back to Bristol. How was that like? Yeah, it was, it was cool, man. I, I wouldn't say it either helped us to grow closer or made us distant far apart but um yeah it definitely like you know like like seeing my coach who's who i played for on a professional level be a na- national coach uh yeah it was definitely like something to be like geez okay well without him or, not, or without his kind of like yeah something for relationship then probably won't be here again it goes back to what we said earlier just building those relationships because you never know that's, yeah that's true man <laughs> I pull you into opportunity that you didn't expect coming. So, um, but yeah, so yeah, it was it was it was cool, man. And and some of the other guys had to kind of get used to being used to being him as the head coach, and um, also like he's, get a feel for his coaching style and stuff because he's very, very he's very structured, and his his coaching philosophy is very um, European like. And I was I would not not say that in a bad way, but yeah. It, it, it takes some time getting used to it, put it like and put it in that sense. Okay. All right. All right. That makes sense. That makes sense. How, so, like, two other players that are also a fan of the Bristol Flyers. How did they adapt to it? Um, Fred Thomas. I saw him one time after the finals you had against Worcester. Okay. How's it? How's the, How's your relationship with him like on that team, man? How's the relationship with him like me? Yeah. And, oh, oh, yeah. 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 Guy, man, amazing guy, amazing guy for sure. Um, funny as heck, though. <laughs> funny as heck. He's from, no. he's from Mississippi, so he's so laid back, isn't it? Yeah, laid back, man. 
so chill, so chill. Remember him because I was at work, and then he was like, "Yo, man, you got the next train to Bristol." It's like, I was like, oh, Fred Thomas goes, "Yeah, man, shh, don't say." <laughs> I was like, I was like, "All right, man, all right, man." Just took you to the platform and that. It was crazy. Cause I can see that because that is actually him for real, for real. Yeah. Because I said to him, oh, would you like to come on the show? He goes, ah, oh, nah, I tell that talking, man, you know. I got other guys that could do that. I told I talk to them for you, man. I was like, all right, cool, no worries, man. We <laughs> 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 just chilled out. I was like, fair enough, man. But yeah, he's cool, man. Have you seen his kids? Huh? No. That's two lovely kids, man. Oh, yeah, on Instagram, yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah, I've seen him on Instagram, yeah, yeah. He got him working out, man. He got him doing, he got him working hard. Doing some sit-ups and stuff like that. <laughs> Genius, Brian. You know, and your team's athletic as well, isn't it? You can jump because you and you got some jumpers on that team as well. Yourself, um, um, him is Delpesh as well. Oh yeah, Delpesh is the jumper. Damn, man. Yeah, he's the jumper. Him, he's the jumper, and Fred Thomas is the jumper in terms of like the kind of dunk. It's crazy, bro. <laughs> no, no push is just fair. I'm like, what the hell is that? So what's this guy eating, man? Give me on this diet, man. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know what it is. There's some guys that are um, where certain parts, like in America, like this. Not not saying not saying it's in a bad way, but certain parts of America, there's guys that are just built for something specific. Like, yeah, you know, talking about like if you're talking about. Like, let's say, we're talking about basketball-wise. If you're looking for someone who's, like, smooth in terms of play-wise, like, play yeah. like the play style is definitely California basketball. Like, California basketball. And so, okay. Stuff like that. If you're looking for guys who are, like, just athletic, jump out this world sort of thing, then those guys exist, like, in the South somewhere. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> you go West, you got, you got like, um, the Harrison Barnes uh, or, or some of those yeah, guys. Yeah, yeah. Very tactical like they're very they're very sound with what they're doing you know what i mean like this is this is a this is what i'm gonna do you know so yeah yeah uh, and then and then you have new yorkers like they just you know just do or you got east coast hoopers with just like whatever like they just they just hoop <laughs> true, true, true. yeah the handles or something they get to the they love getting to the basket the new yorkers man they just get bang, 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 get to the basket they that's it. It's, they want. They just want to do whatever they can to get that ball in the bucket. Put it like that. So, um, I always ask everyone this question on this this talks: is what's your views on the BBL, man? What's things you think are working and things you think they could improve on? <sighs> oh man, oh uh, man. It, I, I well, to be honest, I think. <laughs> I think BBL can use somebody with a vision. <laughs> somebody who could put basketball here in England in the right direction. Forget what's working and what's not because the people that... I think I know someone. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's all like, you know, for what the... For what, for what, like... I don't know. I don't want to put... I want to cross. I don't want to sound like I'm holding people accountable, but, you know, much of, like, the league's sort of, like, leadership you know in terms of like we're looking like sponsorship deals we're looking at investments we're looking at what can be done to grow the field how to grow the game and stuff like that i don't think there's nobody that's in the office that has that vision in mind you know they and people who are who are in the working office have no clue what they're doing so if that if that doesn't improve then the league doesn't improve you know what i mean yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I do agree with you on, on that. I've always said this well for all my show. The marketing is one of the key issues with with the with the professional league anyway, especially. I just feel like when I ask some people about professional basketball in this country, they don't even know that there is a professional league. They don't know. Like, you know what I mean? It's, it's mind-boggling. Man, if they, if they don't have the vision, they, if they don't see somebody... Uh, if they don't see somebody who's in this sport, like who's not in the sport, but who's like who has who has this vision about this sport, then nobody else is gonna buy into it because they, they don't see if they don't see somebody. No, like, they don't see it, man. I can I've seen it from a mind of I know what they can do, and I think I think with what you are doing, Bristol, you are doing a fantastic job of your as a team, your marketing, how you how your the people support you guys, your fans is amazing, and I think a lot of them adapted to that. 
what you do in around the league and in and with me we are, I reckon it can go a lot further than what it is. Sounds sounds to me like BBO need to be taking some notes from Bristol Flyers. <laughs> serious, man. I reckon they do, man. Like, it, it, it's, it's, it's mad. I've always said as well, the marketing is just like, this is what's making me motivate me doing this, man, because I just thought people need to know players because they don't even know the players. That's one of the main things. Like, let's put these players on a pedestal and let's let the world see you. Who they are, you know what I mean? Let the yeah. country at least know who they are. You know what I mean? This is this guy he plays for Bristol, he plays for London Lions, he plays for the Eagles, you know? Yeah. Also, also too, marketing the clubs, right? Marketing the clubs uh, a bit more effectively because, you know, of Definitely. course, people buy into the clubs and they're buying everything else that the club supplies. So you think, you take, for example, like what Bristol's really good at doing is they're good with like engagement and fans, they're good with like some of the content that Definitely. you see with um they're good with like uh, marketing the games every week interviews you know stuff like that not that's just that's just from a marketing point of view from a business point of view it's completely it's something completely else you know i mean there's other clubs around the country like newcastle or leicester um worcester who all have like sponsorship deals and stuff but you know i think one thing i definitely would say it, what should be great is if um the bbl Right, gets a, a a hotel sponsorship deal, you know, for like <laughs> that would be good, you know. That would be good. Stay up, man, to go play. A game. <laughs> <laughs> and you got somewhere to stay afterwards. No, I mean yeah. that, that would work. Or, or even, or even beforehand, like, uh, like when I was yeah. playing, America, yeah, and I know, like, money is completely different. But when I was playing in America, like, we'll leave the night before or the day before, you know, sleep yeah. at night. And then play the next day, and then we we'll leave right after. Okay, that's a completely different ball game. But oh, I know you mean the traveling arrangements. Oh yeah, exactly. Yeah, travel the day before, then play. Yeah, like we travel. Like no, 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 no we're not the only club, but you know, to 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 be on the bus for eight hours, right? If you're if you're like Plymouth or something like that, you're you're there a bit longer. Um, but to be on the bus, and then to play a game probably for about an hour and a half, maybe maximum two hours. Only to then travel eight hours back. Oh man, that's brutal, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Especially they they, they changed the um, flies would change it. They're like for this season, but we didn't play them up in Newcastle. So, but still though, like before then, man, we had to travel eight hours up, play a game, and then travel eight hours back. So we'll leave at like that Newcastle, yeah. Yeah, like we'll leave at like nine, ten o'clock in the morning, play a seven thirty game. And then come back four o'clock in the morning, like <laughs> ridiculous, man. You need to make the, that's what I mean. You need to let players rest, man. At least, yeah, like you said, get there the night before at least, so you're resting, chilled, and then travel. That like, travel back after the game, not to the game, and then play, and then come back. That like, that's that that's does take a toll on your body, man. They're draining, well, man. It does man, and that's something that um, I feel like that's something that the BBL could be doing. It's finding those like sponsorship deals. I mean, like. You know, it's, it's one of those ones where it's kind of like, well, what are, what is the BBL doing, and what are they trying to market? Like, you know, it's it's just funny how how things how things are, you know, in in terms of growth. Because I've heard all sorts of talks about talks about how much each club is paying to to play in the BBL or to compete in the BBL. You just think like that's doesn't sound. I mean, if 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 you multiply it by like ten, then it actually sounds like it actually sounds like a lot like a lot of cash. But then again, it's just. What, what are they doing? You know, so. Well, yeah, I, do that. I always find out. It always bothers me what that like, is there. They know that they can do it. It's like, yeah, it's like you said, it bothers me. Like, who's in there that's trying to actually. I don't think they have a balance. Like, yeah, if you've got someone business minded, like, I think me and Tyler were talking about this the other day where we said it's all. Have someone who's business minded, but have them working with someone who is also a basketball mind. Yeah. He's got them working together. You know, and they can help elevate the sport. You know what I mean? Yeah. This is, as well as some to get a businessman in there, he fills his pockets and he's like, "All right, I'm out now." So, so what about the sport? Like, you know what I mean? Like, there's some there's under the table shady business going on. They just don't want to put it out on the table. The, the, I believe that, man. I do strongly believe that, man. Definitely. Oh, it's just it, mm-hmm. it's just uh, this growing the sport. Like, just there's so there's so much work that needs to be done. That's the crazy thing. I mean. Like you're talking, you're not just talking about, um, you're not just talking about marketing and stuff like that. You're also talking about improving 
the the um, the arenas in the state and the, and the places where games are being played. Like in Plymouth, Plymouth is a is an art place, but the thing is, like they have this tarmac, and underneath that, but underneath that tarmac, like the tarmac is this thin, right? And underneath it's it's concrete. <laughs> wow. I hate I hate playing on concrete. I'm not a concrete guy. I think. I think it will help BBL teams as well if they have their own facilities because exactly. a, lot, a lot of them are using other facilities. If you have your own facilities where you can say, you know what, I also want to work on my game a little quick in this, and you can go to the gym and just use the gym anytime you want. I think that, that would be... That's, de that's definitely an area that can be improved on. Um, fly flyers are working on... Well, the thing is, like with, with flyers, like we're luckily, we, we're lucky enough to have slots at the colleges that we practice and we play at. And so... Um, in the morning, uh, in the morning we usually shoot Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Maybe sometimes yeah. Thursday. Yeah, uh, they have no courses. Well, sometimes they have no courses going on. <laughs> they have no courses or anything going on during the time we're there. But some days it's like, let's say we start at ten thirty, and there's a course or there's um there's like a class coming in at eleven. We have to move over to one side of the court. Oh, damn, damn. So, I mean, you know, that's, that's, that's a little thing like that. You shouldn't be able to move. That should be yours. Like, the, no, but then... Fair enough, though. It's a college, but, yeah. If you have your own facilities, that kind of avoid all of that. It's yours. No, I, I know what you were saying. Like, I'm not complaining, but it's yeah. it's kind of... Um, it's kind of... Because I know, like, it, it could be so far... It could be far much more worse than some of the other places I've heard of in, in, in England, let alone in terms of training facility-wise and stuff. So... <laughs> I'm not saying no names, but there's some teams out there. It's like, oh damn, man, shit. You know what I mean? It's worse, man. So getting it real bad. I rec I reckon there's some BBO team, right, or some team in England that's um training outside on concrete <laughs> <laughs> in the in the park. <laughs> They've gone to one of them. The local park, you know where the you know the rims. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it's got no net and nothing, <laughs> no chains and that. And that. Whoa, man, is this where we're training? Oh man, bro, they got the football post underneath, though. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, I remember that. That's where they're training right now. Some teams are, yeah. Yo, what's going on, man? Then they have to talk to the kids. Yo, yo, can you come to the court? Yo, come off, man. We're just training quick. Like, flip, no, man. Oh man, I'm professional. Yeah. By the way, if it, if it logs us out, just we'll log we'll log back in. If it logs us out, by the way, just to let you know. Yeah, yeah no worries, man. You you play you play sports yourself. I did play basketball um a while back, but I'm not I'm not I'm more on the other side now. Like I'll do a lot more of this stuff, and um also I help with my brother's um, summer league, the Pro Classic in London. So that's a that's a summer league, really great summer league where it's, it's given a platform for um. Younger, it's a platform for ballers in the UK to hone their skills. So it's like a showcase kind of thing, if you know what I mean. So any coaches, we kind of encourage coaches to come down to see players that they think that could help their teams. So it's happened a few times where some coaches have come down and took teams to D1, took players to D1, sorry, took some players to professionals. So the Pro Classic is really good. Where, some, where, where is the Pro Classic held in, in London? Brixton. Usually, is that the one? So, is it is that the one that's played at midnight, or what's the one that's played at midnight? It's midnight madness. That's a different one. Oh, okay, 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 okay. And Pro okay. Classic is a whole is a is in that same field, but they do they completely run different to midnight madness. So, when, when is it like? What time of the year is it held? So, Pro Classic is usually in the summertime. Okay, what like July, August? Usually around June, end of Juneish, but right, obviously with what's going on now. Know what I mean? Yeah, it's not terrible. Yeah, but well, it's, it's been going on for like seven years now, Pro Classic. So it, they get, they get, um, yeah. So it's good, man. Like you get some players who play, who who's played in the Pro Classic. Tails played in the Pro Classic. Teddy Oka first played in the Pro Classic. We've had Ryan Martin played in. Matthew Bryan's played in it. Justin played in it. So there's a there's some, yeah. Justin Robinson's played in it. Some big names have played it. Orlando's played in it. Okay. Is it good? Pardon? Is it competitive? Yeah. Jesse's <laughs> played in it. You know Jesse Chuku? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They go after it, man. It's, it's great, man. It's great, man. So, so there's guys who come in and try to win. The guys that's coming trying to win, man. So it's, it's great, man. 
You know what? It's, speaking of that, is there any sort of like, um, is there any sort of like uh, basketball that goes on after school's done for kids who do actually generally want to play basketball and try to pursue it further? Well, in the schools, you mean? No, outside of school. So, you know, you ever heard of AAU in America? AAU, I've heard of AAU, yeah. Yeah, so AAU in America, uh, basically after school's done or some, at some point towards when school's about to finish, yeah. you know, yeah, I don't know where they get the funding from. Probably collegiate sports or NCAA. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Basically what happens is that from May to about, let's say, August or so, um, there's competitions that are held in high schools, colleges. Okay. This is all throughout the country. You know, there's some like big tournament names and stuff where a lot of like college coaches come out and come look at some of the kids who are playing basketball and seeing like what scholarship that they want, what what kid they want to take or give a scholarship to for them to come play on the team and stuff like that. Um, and so, which is quite it's quite interesting because everybody's competing for scholarship. You know, there's only yeah, yeah, always. There's always, you know, it's what, like 400 and something Division One schools and there's only maybe 12 scholarships uh, for each school. And you got to think, you got to think, okay, but then if you have a lot, if you have like five, no, if you have like 15 to 40, 50 universities with teams who are all trying to play for some of these scholarships, it makes it like highly competitive. So, um you know, it's kind of like one of those things. But I, what I'm trying to ask is: there is there anything like that that goes on here, where if you have like some sort of national under 14 to 16, 17 age, right here, all here in the UK, you know, if there's like tournaments that go on throughout England, where let's say if I have a team here in Britain yeah. and I want to take them to a basketball tournament in Birmingham. And there's teams from like Newcastle or Scotland or London yeah. all come and play, like you know, you know what I mean, and make it competitive. And there's also something to play for. I'm asking, is there if, if there's anything like that out here? If there is, I wouldn't know. There probably is, but I don't. I don't think there is. I'm not. I would, I've never heard of anything like that. But knowing in this country, it's very good at not. You always. It's, it's very good at not marketing it very well. Mm. So if there is something like that, you know what I mean. So most of the time, what I've seen here, you, it's like you get the season, everyone plays for the season. Some national league, professional, whatever it is, and then summertime is like, all right, that's when everything happens. All these little summer leagues, and then after that, it's back to basketball. So there's nothing mm. like what you're saying is I haven't seen anything like that mm. of yet. Which it sounds like a good idea, which it should do. Yeah, I it would it would uplift the sport a bit more in the country. I, I reckon. It's, a lot of it is the pathway, the sport pathway that just needs to be inf invested in from all the way from, you're talking about GB to England to professional or national level or whatever. And then you're talking about like division wise into schools, into communities. Like it's, it's you're talking about like up and down, you know, it has to yeah. be like, it has to be some sort of flow chart. You know, because if you start and you, you run into this wall and it's like, well, damn, you're going to be scratching your head thinking, I keep going or do I go a different way? You know what I mean? So Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's quite interesting to hear that basketball in England is actually, um, what, is it like top three sports being played? Yeah, it's top, I think it's top two most participated. Most participating? You're telling me. <laughs> you can't make it competitive enough to where you can invest into it and you can create a team that... <laughs> Maybe 40, 50 years later on down the line, could play against the uh, United States of America. I'm just, I'm just thinking big, but yeah, can play in like national competitions. You know? They could. I think that's what baffles me a lot. It confuses me as well. Like if it's, I could understand if it was like, um, say, it was top ten most participated sport. It was like the ten for eleven for twelve. Okay, I get why they're not investing because it's not popular, but it's second most participated sport in the country. So. How can something that's so participated not get that recognition? Just even on a like on a um, school level, even just down on a lower level, not even national or professional. Just why is it not recognised more? Mm. Yeah, that's, that's the million dollar question that we're trying to figure out in today's yeah. time. <laughs> <laughs> it is, man. It's just like it baffles me, man. So it's, it's so you know what I mean. It's just a, a lot of things I just think they're not doing that they could be doing. So, like, but now you got a lot of people recognizing this. So you have got like a lot of these, um, like BBL fix is good. 
Uh, we'll do a lot of, he does a lot of um, broadcasting and putting a lot of information about BBR itself. Got Hooper's Voice is really good. Another uh, basketball outlet. Got a lot of um, news about basketball in this country a lot. And Baller's Voice is another one. Baller's Voice, yeah, yeah. And, there's, and then there's myself. Who's, I'm coming at a different angle of, I want the entertainment side of, like, I want people to see a different side of yeah. the... the, the um, players and the sport so you know what I mean bring my personality to it and just you know bring that player's personality out. so yeah so that's what I know so far there's, so these are the things that we should really be doing more like um, we should be up in the offices really doing this you know what I mean but oh no, for real you know it's just, uh, like a BBL part BBL good glad you did glad you did yes you were saying that um, yeah talking about like uh, sharing more of the player's personality side of yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. So. so I think that's what I've got. That's what I mean. I'm coming at the visual side. I want people to see players and see the personality side. So that's the angle I'm coming at more because I think I've I've watched it for years in this country and I'm like, there's nothing like that here. So yeah, well, that's that's a good. I guess you kind of see where the gaps are. You kind of put yourself. Yeah, I've seen that. Create something different. I see that. I see that. And it's always it's cool too because then you can. Actually, learn a bit more about the player rather than the sport. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it, there's a problem. Like, everything's just linked to the sport, you know. All this player's personality is linked yeah. to the sport, but outside of that, you get and then like, it, it, it gets you more closer to that player. Like I was saying the other time, I'll bring his name up again because he's he's a funny guy and I, and he was a great player. Was Gilbert Arenas? Oh like, yeah, like how everyone, as well as you know him as a player, you see him off. What well, he's like off the court is like. He's, he's funny he's got a personality that him and Nick Young is great and it's like it brings you more closer to them and you're like you're, you're more you're more like bought into them as a person as well as a basketball player so yeah no, I mean at the end of the day playing sports is just an experience it doesn't necessarily make that person yeah. that per it doesn't make that person you know what I mean so that's why every day man not every day most some days where you know, it's, it's, I know it's, I'm going to sound like a a hole saying this, but some days when people think, when they look at me and they say, "Oh, you're like a basketball player," I say, "I play basketball, but that's not who I am. Like I'm a human being." Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I know it sounds a bit, it sounds a bit a holeish, but you know, what I mean, I just I gotta keep it real because at the end of the day, like you know, uh, like if you take away my sport, take away my experience, then what am I? You know, exactly. So, yeah, you know what I mean. So, Helping people to helping people to see that point of view, like not all athletes are their sport, or not just their. It's sport. not living there. There's other things to do. A minute, there's more to them. You know what I mean? One hundred percent. Just gotta invest a little bit more time. So that's why I believe invest athlete. invest in the players a bit more, man. So, and then the sport will elevate. I reckon. And I said it's important. It's important. Plus, too, like it also kind of as as that person that's on a receiving end in terms of like me or whatever. Yeah. You kind of, I feel a bit more cared about, you know what I mean? Yeah. Kind of, you know, as a person, as a genuine person, so, or just anybody else, anybody else who's also feeling that sort of, like, same, or in that same sort of position when people come across to you in that sort of way, but, yeah, and I still, you still feel like, okay, it's, it's, it's that appreciation you get for being looked at as though, okay, this person, you know, someone's having a nice conversation with you, asking how, how are you, you know, yeah, and yeah. stuff like that, like, that's, important man that's bad those are the valuable sort of things not because oh you're tall tall yeah <laughs> all of a sudden you play basketball tall and black plays basketball like, oh come on man yeah. you could be a doctor you don't know what you could be right could be anything you never never know you just never know so i see oj in here yeah oj what's up <laughs> oj man where you been man Gee. um so this is one of my favorite parts of my talks i have these hotspot questions Okay. So yeah, the two free part questions, and the first part is a player you love playing with, a player you love playing against, and funny teammate or funny. Teammate. <laughs> oh man, player. Okay, I say player. I love playing with. <laughs> <laughs> you get some comments from NBA Live and all that. It says, "Let's get spicy." <laughs> okay, all right, all right. 
I ain't keep happy Brian Madden in there still. Um, uh, let's see, favorite player I love playing playing with. Ah, uh, so so it's love playing with. Yeah, I was gonna say okay, so it's between two mm-hmm. players, Fred Thomas and Marcus Del Pesh. See, like, and then and then the two I like as well. Then one of the two, then some of the twos I like from your team. That's ironic, isn't it? Ironic, no, coincidental, still mad. But yeah, no, they, they, those two guys, man, like um, just they, like the way Fred plays, like he just kind of like he just he, he's gonna do something crazy or he's gonna do something nice. Del Pesh always gets like, something like, done. Hey, yeah, man, you, you know what? And they may be lucky he wasn't there this year, but um, <laughs> <laughs> we played London City. Yeah. We played London City uh, at London, and uh, Fred, I, I, I gave a screen for Fred or something like that, and uh, he split the screen. And I've seen it. I posted it on my posted it on my page. He split the screen and got oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. You know what I mean? He just <laughs> it's all <old> word. Oh, <laughs> word. <laughs> <laughs> So don't take it too serious. But yeah, um, yeah, no, when he did, I was like, dang, like that was unexpected. Like he just rose. That's again, that, that's like the kind of play that he is. Yeah, yeah. Good to than that, his ability. Uh, Marcus Del Pesh, like it's just we just had good chemistry when we play, play, play. You know, in the games and stuff like that. Because he's obviously a big, I'm a big yeah. too. So it's kind of him happy. You know what I mean? Like. He's one of those guys. He wants the ball. So it's kind of like, why not give it to him? Yeah, like, yeah. He's he with it, you know. Either he's gonna dunk with somebody, or if he's gonna put the ball in the rim. So, um, so yeah, like he uh, playing with him a little bit um, is is good. But then also off the court too, like just so you know, just the way he is as a person and stuff. He's a funny guy. He's funny. Him and Fred Thomas are just both funny guys. Let's see, play play to play again. Yeah, love you. Love playing against. I love playing against. You know, there is the phone. There he is, yeah. Oh, snap. <laughs> yeah, him, him or, um, I didn't like playing against Matthew. <laughs> <laughs> he don't respond, too. I didn't, I mean, he was You didn't like playing Matthew Brain. <laughs> oh, sure. Yeah, no, nah, he was he was like he just, yeah, he came in, he just did whatever he could, really. But he always had this he had he always had to use his right hand in every move that he did. Do that um, Darius. <laughs> no, right. no, no, no. Uh, yeah, yeah, he always uses his right hand. He sussed it out. But yeah, the phone, um he's just physical. He's like a big guy, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, you know, he's 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 um he's like a big guy. And then there's another one too, uh uh, Fraser, Joe, Joe Fraser. I think it's Joe Fraser from Scotland. Uh, from Scotland, from Glasgow. Stop. Might be. <laughs> might say stop it. You know, <laughs> might be. It might be. <laughs> if they broke, don't fix it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! And, and I wanted to lie, Ali Fraser. <laughs> Ali Fraser. Yeah, nah. yeah, Ali Fraser. Like he's. He's got a unique sort of game. I mean, he's 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 like a big, you know. He's very skilled. Like watching, <laughs> watching his ta- watching his tapes sometimes a little bit. Just how he scores and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, he uses like these little small, dirty tactical moves, but it's effective. Yeah, though, yeah, so yeah. The reason why he's why he's doing what he's doing down goes. Oh, you you guys stop it, man! These guys, <laughs> you guys stop it, man. <laughs> Oh, oh, I love them guys, man. I love them guys. I grew up with Matthew. Me and Matthew have grown way back. So I've, I've grew up from him with Brixton. So since, since, um, how? When Matthew now? Eight years old? That's, yeah. Yeah, he, he used to give me some nice tuna sandwiches, man. So, you know. Yeah, the, yeah Matthew had his tuna sandwiches, but I'll tell you that now. He needs to, he needs to make a business and start selling them, man. Yeah. <laughs> I could see him scoffing like three, four of them all at once. Huh? Yeah, I don't think I tried to steal it. I used to try to steal it off him. He would never share it, but I had to steal it off them, them tuna sandwiches. <laughs> so, when you get mad, you run though. I had to run. I had to run for a bit. So, you know, to run away, Matthew was was as fast as me, so I could get away with it. And then, you know what I mean? They yeah. take it out of me on the court. So, you know, it's cool, man. It's cool, man. <laughs> What part of London are you from? I'm from South East Catford. 
Catford. Oh, that's not too far from North, uh, from Abbeywood. No, 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 not too far. I was living up the street. That's crazy. That's where. That's why I, I used to um, I used to live there. So I used to live in Abbeywood. Oh, so that's why we used to. Oh. Like, Catford, Lewisham. That's me, man. That's me. Yeah, Lewisham. What's that? Greenwich as well. Yeah, yeah. Southeast. Greenwich. Southeast. Yeah. Southeast, Ooh. Southeast, man. That definitely find your culture. You find your yeah, yeah, yeah. It was there. Then I went and played at Brixton. So, what did you say again? Oh yeah, funny teammate. That's it. The question. So, um, I got lost track. Yeah, funny teammate. Funny teammate. Funny teammate. Well, ever or just this past season? You could go with ever or past season or a funny teammate or funniest teammate. Yeah. Luke Champ, Luke Champion, Luke Champion, <laughs> Blue Ball. <I'm> saying, <laughs> yeah, Blue Ball, Blue Ball. Um, <laughs> Luke Champion. Yeah, Luke Champion. Yeah, Luke Champion. Like he's just, he's funny, man. He's a funny guy. Like down to earth, but he's just like he's one of those like kind of like in, like it was what I say like an English lad sort of thing. Okay. You know, like he's, you're around him, like he, his smile is like contagious. Yeah, he looks a bit like. He looks like he's very witty, isn't it? Like he's just very sarcastic sometimes as well. Like he's got he's got a good he's got a good energy with the crowd when I watch him play. Makes a free and you'll look at the crowd like you're like this guy here. Like what? <laughs> he's like but in, isn't it? But you know, yeah, like Lou Chat, man. He's he's a he's a good guy to be around in terms of like laughter and stuff yeah. like that. Like he'll he'll make a joke about anything from big to little. You know, okay. from little to big. So it's kind of like he he'll come up with, <laughs> he'll come up with something childish, but at the same time it, it kind of like goes along. With yeah, it, yeah. It is. It's just like you have not no, no no choice but to laugh at him. So yeah, he's a, he's one of the funniest guys that I know of. Uh, uh, what should I say? He's a funny guy too. Oh, Kofi. <laughs> yeah, he, he mentioned you one time. <laughs> he, he's Kofi. He's funny too, like just because he's from Birmingham. So yeah, he yeah. has like this. <laughs> you know, Tommy guy sound too, like I'm from Broome and all that. Yeah, 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 they got that. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I like Kofi, man. Yeah. Yeah, so, there was another free part to that question, and the other free part was a player. You didn't like playing with, so they're not necessarily something you hate. Just you still like playing with them, even if they're your friend, player. You didn't like playing against, and a funny opponent. All right, uh, somebody I didn't like playing with. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of that's kind. Of, do I have to answer that question? I don't want to say no names now. <laughs> okay, I'll tell you what. I ain't gonna say no names, but if you somebody, it's a team I. Um, with him on, I said, oh, "Well, we played on the same team, but I, I, I just not say I could. I didn't like it. It's just his ego was so big. You know what I mean? You might like him still, but you just didn't like playing with him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even even yeah, kind of. I don't I like him. I, just, I didn't like him. I just couldn't like. It's, it's a bit like I, I, I gotta keep my distance from him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, and, you know what I mean? Like yeah, you yeah. know, stay over, stay over there. <laughs> But yeah, no. Nah, so I played with him in, in college, at Iowa State. So. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I'm not going to drop any names. But then, what was the other? What was the other question? Player, you didn't like playing against your kryptonite. Player, I did not like playing against. Ooh. Is it? Do you? Everyone, everyone has a kryptonite. Shout out, Kofi. Kofi. Yeah, we was literally just talking about him still. Um. Player, I did not. Player, I did not like playing against. Ooh, you know Brandon Peel. <laughs> I know I, I I enjoy his game. I love I love playing against him, but his game is he's Brandon just Peele. like Brandon, Brandon Peel for London. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, like he's his game is like you don't know what the heck he's gonna do. Like, he he can score in any given way. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> yeah, Brandon Peel. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm getting big. Yeah, he's smooth, boy. Oh, you get yo. Listen, but you before you know it, you you done your best. You done your best. <laughs> and you're like what the heck? Like what? <laughs> like, so um, yeah, now nah, he yeah he his his game's like nice though. Like in terms of scoring the business, yeah, he's, like you really really have to be switched on. Like you have to know where he is. Like 
Yeah, and you got to, you know how some guys, you kind of contest, you don't believe they're going to make this yeah. time, maybe some, some of the league probably feel that same way about me, <laughs> or whatever, but, <laughs> but Brandon feel like you got to live legit, like, trying to go down. He can shoot the three, and he can put the ball on the floor, and he can get to the rim. He can get in a post, he can do all of it, man. Randy, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, you know, he can do all that. So, yeah, he's a bit of a sw- He's definitely a dangerous guy to play against. And then, um, what's the other Funny part? Opponent. Of Funny opponent. Funny opponent. Mm-hmm. Funny opponent. Funny <laughs> opponent. Just to, personality-wise, game-wise. You could say game-wise, someone in the game that made you laugh. Or, just, or do you get some delusional characters or something, someone in the game that make you laugh or... So my first year, um, my first year we played, uh, oh man, it's actually, there's actually a two part answer to that question, my get one. So first year when I came to the league and, uh, and, and this guy or the players coach for Manchester at the time. <laughs> players coach. Okay. But he had like, he had like cornrows and it was, uh, a game of, well, he coached the game and he played the same. You and Williams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nipping out. Oh, OG Uric. Oh, damn. <laughs> He's a good guy. It's just funny, like, to see him sometimes. Because, as it's like, when you see him, it's like, you're the coach. Oh, bro. The coach is sick. Uric Williams, yeah. You know of Uric, though. If you go back at least 10 years with him, ooh. He was a he was legit back 10, 10, 20 years ago. You could play back in the day, but he's he's yeah, man. He's just like he's, he's older. He's like yo, man. He's a chill now. But he's like Yurik, man. It's not you're not that guy no more, man. You just got to pass. The ball. Yeah. Work in the office, like man. This. Work in the front office. You be right there. Man. <laughs> oh, run the team. Yeah, man. Like, don't worry. Like, Kobe just said, co- uh, "Coach shooting eight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's true though. Nobody, nobody would want to go out and go close to him because they don't believe he'll make it. But sometimes he would make it. Sometimes he wouldn't. It's mad, <laughs> you're it, man. It's like, yeah, man. It's like, yeah, he's past his time now, man. This is not pass it on, man. Yeah, let it go, let it go. Another guy, another guy. Oh man, one more. Who's the other one I was thinking of? Oh, you know, the little short guy from freaking. Um, sorry. Small, smallest guy on the team. Can't think of his name. Um, Kalen, we're top of this. We're top of this. Yeah. Oh damn. <laughs> we we were, we played sir this season, man. And uh, you just think this little guy, man, don't come to the lane otherwise. It's going you're gonna get bumped. You know what I mean? <laughs> like him, him, but uh, he. he and what's funny is he drove a couple times to the rim and actually scored. You were like, yo. We switched. We somehow switched because you know under eight seconds or whatever we switched. And uh, and uh, Marcus was on. Marcus Del Pesce yeah. was on. We, we we everybody was saying like you know oh hand up hand up hand up. But where he shot it from, you're like that's not a realistic shot in the game. But not he made it though. It was like <laughs> it was like what the hell like he, he's four foot three getting a, getting a shot over a six foot nine guy. That's it's bad. Like, the how. That cannot happen. So, yeah, it's just, just little funny stuff like that that um that kind of gets to you playing. Sometimes he was he'll come up with some big numbers, surprisingly enough. Okay. <laughs> yeah, he could shoot. I remember he could shoot the hell out of the ball, man. He, he was a nice, he was, he was an assassin when I last saw him. Man, he could shoot the ball. Yeah, no, nah, yes, he, he could shoot the lights out from time to time. Um. 
trying to think of who else. Who else can I think of that was funny to just play against? Oh, man. What's that guy from Glasgow? The big... The, the number 25, I think. can't remember his name. Let me see if I can find him. I can't remember his name. I bet somebody, when somebody, maybe maybe Kofi might know. Kofi or... Kofi probably know. Yeah, if they're watching it. Um, uh, he, was, he was a French player. Goofy. You know, linky, goofy guy. I thought you said goofy, you know. <laughs> Oh, no, I remember his name. Oh, I wish I knew his name now. No, no, Kofi. It was the other one. He was, um, he was the linky big guy. He was like number 25. 25 or something like that. It was stuff. Oh, no, I don't know, know him. He's new. Yeah, he was, he was one of the new guys. He was, I think he would actually start over like Ali Frazier. Um, so he'll be the starter. For let me see if I can French. find it. Um, That's well, not no shade on his name. The French dude. Yeah. 25. It's not Fraser. Hey, I've seen the baller. <laughs> Boy, oh, you know yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Something like that. Um, um, Dijon, yeah, baller. Something like that. Uh, baller. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he, was, hey, he, was, he was a funny guy, man. Like, <laughs> like, you know one of those guys, right? That um that what's it like they they look like they're a threat when you play them they're just like oh you're not, you're not <laughs> so, so looking deceiving you're like oh I thought you was we thought you'd be kidding me man what's going on <laughs> yeah no that's that's uh that's the jokes that's that's the way it is some hey yeah it's just, it it'd be it'd be funny watching him play a little bit I mean he's competitive but don't get yeah. me wrong yeah, he, he is he is athletic. It's just, there's some guys. Matthew's <laughs> <laughs> <Nice> laughing. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Don't go. <bro. laughs> hey, how are you? Man said he looked like... <laughs> he looked like a friend. I know it, but the funny thing is I know what you're saying because then sometimes he's like... I'll give you an example. You know when you used to go to a scrimmage? And then yeah. at the scrimmage, you see a guy a certain way, you're like certain bill wearing certain um, basketball g um, garments. You're like, yeah, he probably could play. And then and giving the ball, you're like, yo, what's he <laughs> you know, what's what's doing? <laughs> like, hey, yo, like, what's going on? <laughs> and then there's and then there's one that like, looks like he doesn't look like a threat, and all of a sudden he's killing you. Like, huh? Like he's, he's he's got holes in his shoes. He's got he's got a ripped t-shirt. Like what? It, oh, damn, like. I've the worst I've seen. I've seen a guy play barefoot at the um, park one time. I was like, "Wow!" I said, "I said, bro." Yeah, yeah like it was in Lee Tide Park. He's playing barefoot, but he was he was giving buckets to people. I was like, I "Said this out." Barefoot. Yeah, it's barefoot. Foot. He took. He was taking shoes yeah. off because he was wearing shoes and he's playing barefoot. I was like, "Bro, it's a damn boy." <laughs> <I said, laughs> your 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 pain tolerance got to be high. I don't know. I'm, I'm they ain't playing barefoot. Where forget that, man. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm flipping. Oh, I was like, this guy, I said, I said, salute to you, man. You're more better than you than me. Yeah. Nah, man. You got the buckets, innit? I'm, I'm, nah, man, I can't imagine playing barefoot. Like, nah, I can not imagine. So, <clears throat> it's almost like in other countries where, you know, it's almost like when you think about it, football, like guys out here are used to playing, you know, on grass and stuff yeah, yeah. like that. You know it's, this is what they're accustomed to, but in other countries where the sport is just as much played, but they have no grass, like you look at it in, in Africa and whatnot, yeah. and parts where they playing on like ground where it's like you know pure dirt, yeah, or you know dried up, some sort of dried up field. You just think like, and they play with like no shoes on. Yeah, 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 it's mad, <laughs> it's mad. So when they do get shoes, <laughs> they're killing you even more. So, so it's a good man. <laughs> so good. Yeah, for real. Yeah, if he grew up playing on concrete, barefoot, then, I mean, surely it must be nothing for him. So, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, yeah, man, before we all head out here, we work, work night shifts out here. <laughs> um, got any questions for anyone else? Get any more questions? And, that, and have you got any questions for me? You probably might. <laughs> yeah? Do I have any questions for you? Or did you say the... Yeah, do you have any questions for me? And if anyone else has got questions themselves or is tuned in? Uh, 
Oh, no, no, I don't, no, I don't have no questions, man. All right, man, no worries, man. Yeah, no questions. I mean, it's great, great. Thanks for having me on your, on your talk show and whatnot. It's, it's quite entertaining. Definitely. Be quite... Things quite insightful. Definitely, man. Funny. This is where I want to take it, man. This is, I want to take it on a screen. So, yeah, this is just a little... This is just me promoting it, promoting it and that. So, when we go to the big screen, we definitely bring you in the show and bring you on set and... Oh, yeah, for sure. I'm with it, man. Definitely. I'm with it. And, uh, yeah, stay positive with it. Keep your head up in it. Definitely. Keep going with it. More hard work. And I'll be at a Bristol game. Don't worry, I'll be at a Bristol game because I love the atmosphere, man. So I'll give you a shout, man. Nah. Okay. No, that sounds good, man. Yeah, just let me know when you're here. Yeah. I'm sure we can take the link up. Everything, man. All right, everyone, thanks for tuning in. Everyone. Right. And Daniel, man, stay safe. Hope you're well, man. Thank you again. Thank you. Peace. Peace. Everything, Chris. Everything, Chris. Everything Chris Everything, everything Everything Chris Everything Chris Everything Chris Everything, everything Chris I'm Chris G, host of Everything Chris Hope you liked that video If you did, click that like button Also leave a comment And also if you want to see more Click that subscribe button To get a notification when we upload new content every single time I hope you enjoyed that video and I hope you stay tuned for some more. And also, as you know with me, everything's always crisp.